Welcome back to me and you outside. And I am outside, and I tell you what I'm about to do. I'm about to catch a big carp, probably, um, I'm gonna say seven to 10, hey, I must go six to 10 pounds. They're kind of range that here. Uh, I'm actually standing in my yard right now because um, I'm looking down there in the river and I can see some pretty big old carp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catch uh, one of them rascals and I'm going to cook it and I'm going to eat it. And the way I'm going to cook it and eat it, I have never eaten carp like this in my entire life. I'm going to cook it as I would uh, possibly a sucker. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, scale it and I'm going to fillet it out and I'm going to score the meat, cook the bones up as much as I can in throughout the meat. Now they have Y bones in them and it's a little bit thicker bone, maybe impossible to cook it up. I may have to just pull those out to eat it. I'm not sure. But the main goal of this um, particular video right here is just to catch a carp and eat it and just try it and give you an honest opinion of what carp is actually like. Uh, you hear all kinds of things about them. Now I've eaten them uh, canned, like and made salmon patties out of them. We fry them and stuff like that. But I have never caught one and, 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 and did to it what I'm going to do to a carp today. Now all I'm gonna be using here is I got a, a bell sinker on here and I've got a, a smaller hook, probably a, um, Oh, maybe a two-aught, three-aught at the most. And while I'm doing this, there's a big old red horse down there too, so I may end up catching him. And what I'm going to use for bait is pretty, pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to be using green, uh, canned whole corn. And that is all I'm going to use for bait. I know they love it here because I have thrown corn out there for them before and they have eaten it. They love, love corn. So let's get going here. I'm gonna put this camera back on my head and I'm gonna try to catch one of these things. Now I gotta show you something else I'm gonna do here. That way when I'm doing it, you'll know what I'm doing. Stay with me here. Gotta walk up here under my house. Not completely under it. But here is a massive handle dip net. Now this is a, <laughs> this is a long handle dip net right here and I need it because I am going to be scooping up this fish if I catch him here in the river. So I'm gonna have this handy. And what I'll do is you'll see me take this net and it'll go down in the water and I will try my best to land a fish with this. As you can see, I can touch the water with it. And um, this handle is probably, I don't know, 14 foot long, something like that. Big old dip net, I got a Bass Pro's Atlas store which I buy everything at Bass Pro Outlet Store in Springfield, Missouri. All right, let's go here. It's probably going to be pretty uh, interesting. Let's see if I can catch one of them big rascals. There, I got him. That's a big one. <laughs> Boy, they're fighters now. Now the trick is gonna be good. Just don't get over there and get wrapped around the stuff. Gotta watch myself and not fall off this bank. I did not want to fall off this bank. It's like a 10 foot bank here. Maybe more. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Come on, big feller. Now I'm gonna get my uh, net ready here. I ain't ready for netting. Mm. The other carp are just going crazy out there. Come here, big boy. I'll get my net ready. Mm. This is a trick, I'm not kidding you. This is a trick. Get him in there, I got him. Come on, big. Ah, come on. I got it. No. Oh, I had to get rid of Drop my pole. Oh. Oh. Come on, fella. Whoo. Mm. Ah, that was something else now, I'm here to tell you. 
Let's get him out of there. He's a, mm, let's say, seven pounds probably. Hmm. Seven pound cop. Get the hook out there. All right. I really move my camera from my head here so I can see what I'm doing. That's a nice big carp. Like I say, seven, at least seven pounds, I would say. Now, I'm gonna take him to a cleaning table and we will clean him. And we will eat him and let's all be surprised together because i don't know i just don't know me and the carp right there all right stick around put him in the frying pot later this evening You'll all see this in just one consecutive shots. Thanks for watching. Hang in here. Time to skin this big feller. I weighed him. He weighed nine pounds. I thought he was bigger than seven, but I didn't want to say that he was and then feel stupid the other way. So I'd rather feel stupid by underweighing a fish than overweighing a fish because I have done that too many times. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this rascal, get the scales off of him. That's quite a, my is on a sucker. I'm doing this on the, the bed of my uh, Kawasaki mule because he's okay. He, it's just his nerves, but, um, because he's dead. But, um, I do this outside away from my skinning area because these scales, see them flying around? If you do that in your shop or something like that, you'll find scales for a year or more. I don't want to find any scales. So I'll wash all these off of the driveway. And my wife can ask, what are those scales doing in the driveway? Then I'll have to explain that. But she won't buy it. Will she Jackson? My grandson Jackson is running the camera right now. He's never done this before, but I think he's going to do a pretty good job. What do you think? Him and I went turkey hunting this morning. We didn't do any good. So we come back home. I went down there and caught me a carp. Had to go back up there and pick him up. Come down here and help me with the rest of this video. So that's what he's doing, bless his heart. All right. Well, I can tell you right now, I took scales off of him. But when you brush him back, look. It looks like the scales are on. It's kind of crazy. Come back this way. Look at that. It's skin. Brush it back. Scales. Kind of a weird deal, I guess. All right. Now... I'm going to get this uh, fillet off of the body. I'm, going, I'm just going up under here and hitting the, the backbone, coming down. Again, just like you would fillet any other fish. Uh, coming in here along the spine. Uh, this, this cart meat going to be something else. Just to look at it, it ain't that bad. I did, I'll tell you what I did. I bled him out. I cut his tail off. Tried to bleed him that way like I do catfish, but that didn't work very good. So I had to uh, cut his gills up and he bled out pretty good, which in turn took a lot of the red out of this meat, I think. I've seen other videos of guys doing this and the meat was a little bit redder. All right, look at that. I'm just staying against the ribs there. That's a pretty big slab of meat right there. Now it's got some all kinds of weird bones in there, but I'm going to try to scale it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to finish uh, that side yet, Jackson. So we don't have to worry about that right now. See, I'm talking about scales everywhere. And let me while you're there, Jackson. Let me get my garden hoses. Hoses. The size of these scales. Whoa. Those are big scales. Yeah. Big scales. I did a sucker video. Probably y'all saw that. Most of you did. 
Everybody was saying, or somebody was saying, oh, it's a carp. That's, no, it wasn't a carp. It was a sucker, white sucker here in Missouri. This is just a river carp. I mean, just a basic carp you'll find anywhere down the, down in this part of the country, on the lakes, rivers. They're in abundance. If I could figure out this was really a good eating fish, I could have tons of fish to eat if I thought that was the case. Now what I'm gonna do is pretty good size uh, piece of meat right here. So I'm gonna come right down here and I'm just gonna take this skinnier piece out. which is gonna, I can tell my cutting's got a lot of bones in it. And I'm gonna take some of this red out only because I'm not stupid. And I know that there's this red meat in a lot of fish and most fish is no good. I might make good catfish bait. I have to think about that. Now, I'm keeping some red meat in there because if I take all this red meat out, it's, on, it's right next to the skin. Well, I have to keep the skin in there. So I'm going to cut this in pieces that I would want to fry. About like that right there. Okay, now then, I'm going to score this. Again, I'm cutting it down just to the skin. I'm going through bones like crazy. You can hear it. Hear that? This will be so interesting. I'll have my wife here after a while and she'll uh, taste test this with us. Or we might just do it just me and my grandson here together. We'll see. All I'm doing again is I'm just cutting this about. Trying to keep it within uh, 3 sixteenths, eighth of an inch. Again, just like I would a sucker. And again, what I'm trying to do is allow grease to hot grease, 350 degrees to get down in these cuts right here and fry up the bone. That's the goal. Again, there's bigger bones in a carp, so we still may have to pick bones out as we eat. But they'll be noticeable. They won't be sneaky where they get in your mouth and you swallow them accidentally. We're not going to do that. Okay. I'm just going to finish doing this, this carp. I can tell them, them bones are pretty, pretty tough. Again, I'm not wanting to cut through the skin, and I'm not keeping that skin intact. Won't eat the skin. That skin will not be worth a hoot to eat. You see that red meat in there? See that red right there? That right there is probably not good either. But again, I don't have any way to take that out of there without um, destroying the flay. Because I'm trying to keep this integrity of the flay together with the skin on it. That's good right there. Now, I'll wash this up real good. And I'm going to batter it in Zataran just like I do any other fish. I'm going to drop it down 350 plus degrees. I might go a little hotter on this because I want it cooked really good. These little thin pieces here might fry up fine. I don't know. I'm going to try it. All right. So I'll tell you what. We'll just see you. We'll just see you at the frying table about right now. Just like that. All right, we are here cooking carp. Carp, can you believe that? We're cooking carp. All right, I've got, I just had it soaking in milk for no reason other than to get it all good and wet and moist where all the, uh, this is Zatarans, dip it in Zatarans again. I ought to have Zatarans sponsor me, my goodness. I keep calling their name out, but they don't care. So here we go. I'm putting this in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake this up really good. That made quite a bit of meat. If, if carp was actually delicious, of course you probably wouldn't find them as thick as they are. You wouldn't find them as, you wouldn't find them near as thick as they are if they were a really good eating fish. Let's say like a crappie or a catfish or walleye for Pete's sakes. They'd have limits on them and everything else. I'm just shaking this up really good. Got my temperatures a tad over. A tad over, 350, which is just fine. It's just fine. Shaking it, making sure that batter gets in them 
crevices. Ah, that's very important. All right, she's moving in there. It's going to look pretty good. I'm anxious about this part in more ways than one. I just, I just don't know, folks. I, I mean, a lot of you haven't tried carp either, so you don't know. You don't have a clue either if it's going to be good. You're just watching me to see if it is, and then you're going to make a decision if you ever want to mess the carp or not. I did leave one piece whole. I took the red off of it, and I didn't score it just because I want to do something different. We'll see how that piece turns out. But I'm going to drop in a bunch in there right now. It's a little over 350, which is okay. It's going to cook that pretty fast. But it'll, I'm telling you, it'll cool down real fast. When you drop that much fish in your grease, you are going to cool it off fast. Let's go with another piece or two in there. I don't think I want to put it all in there. Let me see what i got left in here. Uh, I might just stick it all in here. It'll cool it down pretty fast, but I want to crank my heat back up. Whenever you put a, that much fish in there, it's going to cool your grease down enough that you need to turn your heat up to keep up with it. So let me do that. It's going to be a little noisier. A little noisier, but see, it's already dropped to 350. It was, it was about 320, and it's come down about 20 degrees. In just a, a short minute there. All right, she's cooking good. Now I'm going to roll them around just a uh, this little bit. I mean, you know, as far as fish goes, it looks as good as any fish you'll ever cook. That part I can tell you. But how's it going to be at the, at the table fair? As a table fair, I not sure. I will do a video maybe in the next uh, couple of weeks of pressure cooking carp and I'll show you the, the difference in it. And when you pressure cook carp it dissolves all the bones. The bones become as soft, about as soft as the flesh itself. And you can take them out of a jar, you smash them, you fry them, they become like salmon patties and they're honestly pretty good. But um, We'll do a video on that maybe here in a week or two. I got to get quite a few carp for that. I'd like to have about 10 to 20 carp. So I'll probably get those in the lake, either bow fishing them or something like that. But get numerous carp. And get them right now because they're spawning on the lake. But uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can do a video on that in the next couple weeks. I'm going to let these cook for just a little bit. And then I'm going to take them out. So stay with me. I'll be right back. My temperature has slowly climbed back up to around 350, which tells me that that fish is really super hot. And I think I can probably take them out. Now, they've been cooking for a good five to eight minutes. And you can see they look well, well done. And that thicker piece right there, I'm gonna toss it back in. I don't trust it yet. The thinner pieces, I'm gonna get them out of there. Because They are definitely smaller piece there. Oh, they're cooking so pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out there, Jackson Lee. Sure. Get them out of there. Yeah. It's interesting for me because honestly, I have never in my life cooked carp like this. This is a first. And I'm just doing it because I saw one guy on the internet cook it. And he had like six million views. People watching, I guess, do that. And they made some mm -hmm. kind of curry. They put so much seasoning on that carp that there's no way you could tell that carp was really good or not. I've never seen anything like it. It made a curry type stuff. And I was watching that going, oh, come on. Let's do one real here. Let's just, let's get the real taste of carp. What does this really, really taste like? So that's what we're going to find out here in just a minute. And my wife is going to join us. 
and she said she was not going to make her supper out of this carp. She just knows she's not going to. She's kind of going into it with a negative attitude. And I'm trying to keep positive attitude, but she's kind of got a negative attitude about the carp before she even tries it. So she's probably not going to like it regardless. But what if she does? She may say to me, honey, I need you to go catch some carp. <laughs> Wait for that day to happen. I'll meet you at the supper table. Yes, here we are. We have got the, the tasters right here. Now, these two people right here are the best taste testers you will ever find. Now, here we have carp. I didn't mean to yell. Sorry. Here we have carp. And we're going to take off pieces of this carp and try it. My wife's going for it. She's like, I ain't messing around. I'm going to try it anyways. And that, that dark, let me see that piece right there. See this dark stuff right here is what I'm thinking. We'll have a little bit of an odd taste. Now it may not, it may be fishy, but it may not be. I'm curious to know. And I think you can take a piece of fish and eat it without. There's a bone. Yeah. And watch for little bones because these, again, the carp is a little bit different than even sucker probably. What do you think? Oh. What? Tastes really good. Now you watch for a, you watch for bones in a piece like that. Cause I didn't did I score that. Yeah, I did. But it just kind of came off the end. Yeah, take a let me take a piece of your fish right here. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be I'm actually the, dark, the dark part has a little more stronger flavor. The dark part has a little fishier. Okay. Let me try this. And that's got a really dark, dark piece in it right here. I'm going to try this. It's just like she said. Dark. But not, but it's not overbearing. Huh. I'll be. I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm just gonna try, try that with tartar sauce. Looking at tartar sauce and dark. Hmm. You know, that is really dark right there. <laughs> yeah. Strangely dark. Now I'm gonna take a bite of it. Just that dark. Just the dark. That'll be dark. You know? I actually thought that would be nasty, but it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That really I dark really streak in there is not so bad. And then when you eat it with batter and, and, the, and the other uh, colored meat, the whiter meat, it's really good. I don't think it's as bony as sucker. Doesn't seem like it does it. Mm -mm. But it, I mean, it has some, you have to watch for them, but. Jackson, what do you think of it? He it won't stop really eating. Good. He hadn't stopped eating since he sat down here. Carp. Carp. I just can't. A little bit of tartar sauce on that. Hmm. Well, folks, I'll tell you. I am thoroughly surprised. I had a thick piece. I'm going to try this thick piece because... I was, wow, look how white that is. Now, I took all the red off of this one. Look how white that meat is, Sandy. Mm-hmm, it is. Okay, well. We just, we don't have to eat the skin. Hmm. Might have bones in there, though, buddy. There's my little bone right there. It's a Y bone, see, that's what they call the Y bone right uh -huh. there. It is a Y, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> that was really cool. All right. Yep. It's good. It was surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on from here. Thanks for watching. We have come to the to the conclusion that carp is not that bad. We're actually shocked. 
I'd be careful how you cook it. Be careful uh, when you eat it. Them Y bones are big enough. You're not going to probably put one in your mouth and swallow it. You're going to figure it out. It's in your mouth. You're going to take it out real quick. But when you get around those and you have no Y bone, you got pretty good meat there. I got one too. Hmm. Well, you we'll drink coffee right here. And on that note, we bid you farewell from this video. I hope you'll subscribe. You don't have to. I tell you that all the time, but I hope you will. The Lord bless you if you subscribe. Is it okay to say that? <laughs> what if you would? So subscribe. I'm going to keep putting videos out there. You're going to see a lot of trot line videos catching big catfish. 30 pound plus, uh, hopefully in May and June. So a lot more videos to come. I'm going to try to pressure cook some carp in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be coming out. That'll be an interesting one. So we'll... Uh, We'll be back. Thank you for watching me and you outside. One word, no spaces. Share it with your friends and the family. Why not? These are good, clean videos. And we'll be back soon.